Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Sota Watanabe. I'm CEO at Stake Technologies, and we are making product called Plasm Network. So I think this is the first presentation from the community. So I would like to show you a use case is actually built on the substrate. And here is the contents. So I'll be talking about Plasm Network 101, and then describe what we have done at what we are doing right now, and what will we implement. And after that, I will announce some things. So basically, uh, past and now and the future of Plasm Network. So in one sentence, uh, Plasm Network is a scalable DApps platform on substrates. So why does it like scalable? Because we are implementing Plasma. So originally, they are two solution from Ethereum. And actually, not only Plasma, we are also implementing OVM, Optimistic Virtual Machine, I will describe later. So OVM is a unification of all layer two solution. So Plasma Network will be uh, not only Plasma, but also Lightning Network, and Lightning Network, and so on. So since we are building on Substrate, so this, part, this blockchain will be compatible with Polkadot, and we aim to be a parachain once Polkadot is fully launched. So making an application on Plasma Network is taking a different way from the making dApps on traditional, like Ethereum, layer one. So in terms of the traditional approach, so we can make a smart contract and deploy it on layer one. So this is good because we can have the networking effect, all smart contracts will be deployed on the layer one. But the problem is, it does not scale, right? And gas cost is expensive. To solve this problem, we are taking another approach. So bottom one is our approach. You can make smart contract and deploy it on the layer one. And this is a connector between the layer one and layer two. So layer two blockchain can be your blockchain, and it's totally up to you. Can be IoT blockchain, child chain, can be gaming child chain, can be a DeFi uh, child chain. So we still have a networking effect, because all smart contracts will be deployed on layer one. And we have a scalability, because we are using the first layer as a smart contract layer, and transaction will be processed on the layer two. And we have a extensibility because, as I mentioned, layer two will be totally up to you. So why we focus on layer two? Because I think layer two will be much more important next year and two, in two years. Currently, the less than 5% of human beings are using blockchain, but it's almost full. So we need another approach to use blockchain. In the future, I think the blockchain will be used in a different way from the way we use it today. First layer will be a trust layer, and second layer will be transaction layer. And that's why we are focusing on layer two solution. And the, a good comment from the community is that Polkadot is a scaling solution. So why we need another scaling solution on Polkadot? So actually, Pol Polkadot is like a Horizontal scalability. Polkadot has horizontal scalability, and our Plasma network has vertical scalability. These help each other. And at least we have four reasons why we need a Plasma network in the community. So first of all, Polkadot consists, generally speaking, Polkadot consists of two parts, relay chain and parachain. And relay chain does not support smart contract by design. So we need a parachain which supports smart contract well. So from the developer's perspective, um, they will decide on which parachain their application should be built. So scalability must be one of the most important criteria that the developer has. And another reason is Polkadot parachain slot. When we started implementing Plasma Network almost a year ago, there was no parachain at that time. So we assume that like a parachain slot is going to be very expensive. Right now, we have a parachain, which is good for the community. But our plasma, plasma network can be another parachain. And blockchain can be connected to Polkadot through plasma network indirectly, because plasma net, network has a hierarchical structure. You can make layer two. 
and you can connect this layer to blockchain to layer one Plasm network. And if Plasm network is a parachain, so you can interact with another parachain through Polkadot. And also Plasm network does not have a limited slot. So anyone can make a layer two blockchains to connect Plasm network if they have, if you have Plasm token, PRM. PRM is a native token called PRAM. And another reason is more and more scalability. In theory, 2,000 to 4,000 TPS on each parachain under the condition of 100 parachain, uh, which is super good. But some use cases may need more scalability. Let's say IoT use case, DeFi use case, machine to machine payment. So we need more scalability. And the last reason is Polkadot 2.0. So Polkadot gonna be a, like, gonna have hierarchical structure. It's Polkadot 2.0 expected in 2020. So Plasm Network, we implemented Plasma technology on Plasm, Plasm Network. So we have a hierarchical structure as default. Um, before talking about what we are doing right now, let me explain uh, Plasm Network token econ economics. Just kind of basic one. I need more 30 minutes, 30 minutes more if I talk about Plasma Network Token Economics. Um, PRAM, PLM is a native token called PRAM. And PRAM is required for DApps developers to get the DApp slot on the root chain. And number of DApp slots on the root chain is unlimited. So if you have a PRAM token, you can connect your layer two application to layer one. To connect layer two application to layer one, let's say Alice. Alice needs to deposit some PRAM token on layer one, and Alice can mint another laptop the PRAM token on layer two. Since we have hierarchical structure, like Plasma structure, there is a constant transaction from layer two to layer one. Let's say one times in 10 seconds, one times in 20 seconds, and so on. And each transaction take a fee, like a gas. So it decreases the deposit amount. So let's say Bob deposit 100 PRAM token on the layer one and making application on layer two. And Bob need to send constant transaction from layer two to layer one. So the deposit gonna be 100 to 99. 98, 97. When the deposit became zero, so this layer to DAPs will be removed. So developer need a Plasm token to maintain DAPs. And actually I have wrote, written the article, which is about Plasm Network Token Economics on Medium. So if you need further information, please check it. Yeah, finally, I can show you uh, what we have done and what we are doing right now. So I presented Plasm Runtime module at Sub-Zero Summit eight months ago. At that time, we are making a module like this. So Plasma has a lot of types, like Plasma Cache, Plasma Chamber, Plasma PG Spec, Plasma ZK Snacks, and so on. And you can choose which, type, which Plasma to import and customize substrate. Since we are making a module, so we can make a parachain itself. And we imported the Plasma token to the substrate and make a blockchain. And we have launched the Plasma Network testnet uh, one month ago, and which is great. And we are looking for 50 validators all over the world. So currently we have 46 application from all over the world. So we are still looking for around 10 validators around the world. So if you are interested in, please apply for that. And since it's testnet, so Plasma token does not have a value. We will provide the stable nodes with the light to be a first validator after the, our mainnet successful launch. And again, we currently have a 46 application from 35 cities all over the world, so which is great, like Amsterdam, Casablanca, Frankfurt, Tokyo, and Vancouver, and so on. So one of the sad things is that I'm Japanese, so 
I can speak Japanese, but just too from Tokyo. <laughs> so I should talk more in Japanese. Um, and this is what we are working on right now. Merge lock drop and plus, plus DAP reward mechanism, plus operator trading and OVM. So I will describe one by one. So in terms of multi lock drop, before talking about multi lock drop, let me explain what lock drop is. So lock drop is invented by Edgeware, thanks so much. And to participate in the lock drop, you need to decide how much Ethereum will you lock, and you need to choose the duration. Let's say I have a 10 Ethereum ETH, and I will lock 10 ETH for three months. So after the three months, I will get exactly the same amount I locked, which is 10 ETH. And as well as the exactly the same amount, I can get PRAM token. So after the selected duration. Why? Because we are paying opportunity cost. So this is an example. So person A locked 100 ESA for six months. So after the six months, person A can get uh, 100 ESA. And person B locked uh, 500 e ETH for 12 months. And after the 12 months, and person B can get 500 ETH. And also at the genesis, person A can get 600 plasm token and 10 multiply six. So person A can get six plasm token at the genesis. Because person A, person B, person C is paying opportunity cost. So we're gonna do this lock drop three times. The problem of single lock drop is that there is a possibility to reflect on the ratio of Ethereum token holder. So let's say uh, Vitalik has 30% of ESA, or ESA, and Gab has 30%, and the other people has 40% of ESA. And if we do lock drop just on Ethereum, then Vitalik has the light to claim 30% of Plasm token. This is unhealthy for the community. So we will have many lock drop, not only with ESA, but also Bitcoin and DOTS. I'm pretty excited to see Bitcoin lock drop. I hope we can do it because Bitcoin has HTLC, so hash time lock the contract. And many people have just hold Bitcoin. So instead of holding Bitcoin, they can lock Bitcoin for selected duration and they can get Plasma token. And this is the March lock drop schedule. So we're gonna issue 10 billion Plasma token. And there are three lock drop. And the first lock drop gonna be 2020 Q1 after the Polkadot successful launch. And lock drop two is gonna be 2020 Q1 or Q2, around the Polkadot parachain auction. And lock drop three is gonna be probably Q2 or Q3 next year. So at that time, at the first step, the lock, between the lock drop one, lock drop two, our network is gonna be POA. So if you participate in the testnet as a validator, they can be a authorized validator. And the network is gonna be nominated proof of stake after the lock drop two. So Plasma as a service. So currently uh, there will be two ways to use Plasm. The first one is build an application or a child chain on the Plasm network parachain. And second one is import Plasm and make a scalable your substrate chain. So let's say Polymus. Polymus can make second layer by importing Plasm. But the problem is making a Plasma child chain is super tough. There are many components like contract, child chain, operator, and the user. So we have to implement all of them. This is pretty tough for general users, and Plasma-specific knowledge is required. So we made a tool to make it easy. So developer must need a tool to make child chain easily. 
we made a, we will make a tool like uh, AWS. So AWS make it easy to deploy and maintain the application. And the plasma the service make it easy to deploy and manage a child chain. Like this. Um, I want to show you a demo. So first, we can choose which parent chain we will connect. Um, we can choose Plasm chain, and can be Edgeware, can be Polymath chain, and so on. So as a demo, I chose Mock chain and Get Start. So this is a template for the child chain. Enter the child chain's name, my name, and token name, and we can deploy. So as I mentioned, to make a child chain, we need to make contract child chain and operate on Genesis account, and we made it. And we can see the status of child chain. So this is the configuration file, and we can see the status. So contract will be deployed on the layer one. So this is a layer one, this is a layer two. This is all <laughs> we can do right now, but it will be customized, and it will be better and better. Yep. So yeah, we have a lot of contents. <laughs> we have the yeah, Plasm DAPS reward mechanism. So the problem is DAPS creator is definitely contributing to the network, but what actually they are doing is paying the cost, aka gas. So solution is divide block reward into three parts. The 50% goes to a validator, and the 40% goes to DAPS developer, and 10% goes to DAPS nominator. So this can be a basic income for DAPS developer. By developing a useful DAPS for the community, they can earn the money. They can earn Plasm token. So this is the graph. 40% goes to DAPS developer, and 10% goes to DAPS nominator. The more tokens the nominator stake on DAPS developers, they can get more token as a reward. So, and Plasm operator trading. So this is a little bit complicated. Operator trading is a mechanism to buy and sell the right to be a Plasm DAPS operator. The ownership of the child chain, ownership of the application. As I mentioned before, um, Plasma operator, the DAPS creator can get a basic income through Plasma DAPS reward mechanism. So let's say I'm making very useful DAPS for the community. So I can get the basic income, and I'm getting very high basic income. Probably someone want my ownership of the DAPS. So I can sell the ownership to the person who want my ownership. And this is a demo. Oh yeah, this one. So this is a demo. So what we are doing right now is build a contract by using ink and deploy it and upload a constant WASM file. Yeah, just upload it. and generate a metadata of the contract and attach an ABI file here. And currently, Alice deployed this one, this, this application right now. So as we can see here, the Alice has an ownership of the application, and Bob want the ownership of this application. So we can change the ownership. Currently, Alice have the ownership, but Bob has it right now because we changed the ownership. 
we have implemented like operator trading on substrate. Finally, the optimistic virtual machine. So OVM is invented by Ethereum Foundation, the Plasma Group. And this is the virtual machine that is designed to support all layer two protocols, including Plasma and Lightning Network and Lightning Network. So in the future, Plasma Network will be not only for Plasma, but also for Lightning Network and Lightning Network. And this is a pretty big step if we can implement OVM on substrate. And the, we are working with Crypto Economics Lab. They are the grant recipients from the uh, Ethereum Foundation. And if we can implement Plasma as well as Lightning Network, so potential gonna be super huge. And IoT use cases and DeFi use cases can be built on the Plasma Network. So some announcements. So we have uh, a lot of milestones, POC on the testnet, and milestone on the mainnet. We have launched the testnet, and we have implemented token uh, operator trading mechanism, and we have implemented Ethereum lock drop on testnet, and currently we are working on launching testnet version three. We have already launched testnet version two, by the way, and implement token design. And the, our first lock drop will be in January on the mainnet, and we will launch our mainnet in February. And we would like to connect our chain to the Polkadot as a parachain as a next, in the next year. So we are five of us. And you can show, you can see uh, our GitHub on github.com slash stake technology slash plasm. And you can see uh, our latest updates on Twitter, Discord, and Telegram. We are talking technical things on Discord, and you can see the updates on Twitter, Plasm Underbar Network, and this is my uh, handle on Twitter. And you can see general updates on Telegram. Yeah, pretty much it. I'm super happy to be here, and let's make Web3 happen together. Thank you for listening. Oh yeah, if you have a question, feel free to ask. Yeah, so yeah, I will be here today and tomorrow. So let's have a talk. Thanks so much. <laughs>